I went motor racing and had a near death experience. But how did we get here and what happened and what can we learn from it? I mean, this, you know, I normally do sim racing. This sort of stuff, you don't have consequences like this when you crash in the simulator. I'm sure you've got lots of questions in this video. I'm going to answer them. So let's take things back to the beginning of this race. We're here in Gran Canaria and I'm racing here in these Mazda MX-5s courtesy of VBOX Motorsport who are an incredible company and they make telemetry devices that fit on your cars when you go to the track. It's super accurate GPS telemetry. It's way more accurate than you get in your phone and lots of clever stuff that I've talked about in previous videos. So we're here racing MX-5. This is my second ever race in real life. So my first race, my first one. This is my second one and in my first race um, I started fifth, went all the way down to P8 and then we got back to finishing in P5 and that's why we're going to be starting this race also in P5. So the question is, can we do any better? Will we do worse? And I'm going to talk to you about safety in motorsport and my honest opinions as someone who's always been involved in this near-death experience. Um, but I owe it to you to give my honest thoughts because a lot of people watching that might be thinking about going into real world motorsport or transitioning from sim racing into real world motorsport. So I'm going to let you know. So we're starting here on a formation rolling up, lad. There is a, uh, not a Toyota, <laughs> goodness me. There's a Nissan GTR as the pace car, the safety car you see at the front. And then we are in P5. Ahead of us, we have JG, who's a American motor racing journalist who I was battling with in the last race and finishing just behind them. And behind us, we have Frank, the legend from France, who will send it at every opportunity. Think Max Verstappen on steroids. Also, Jason Momoa. That's Frank. So you can see the uh, Nissan uh, GTR pulling off the road there. And my positioning is absolutely atrocious. But I am a rookie. I'm no Oscar Piastri. Although Oscar Piastri's dad did make the software that I'm using to uh, give you this footage. So thanks, Oscar Piastri's dad. I've known him for a long time, it turns out. So here we go going into turn one at uh, the Grand Canaria circuit. I'll give you a little lap guide to start off with. Coming to turn one, very difficult braking zone because you're coming in all sides, you know, crossed up and it's very easy to lose and crash the car. Go around this hairpin, it's a downhill exit and then we go into this super fast uh, chicane. There's only really one line through here, just too narrow and too fast. You can see we pick up the speed, hit the curb on the right, hit the curb on the left and then again we go into an awkward braking zone because you start braking just as you're coming out there. And there's Frank. There he is, right on cue. And then there's a little bit of something odd that happens here. A hand signal. Does anyone know what this means in motorsport? As Frank flaps his hands. I think it means, don't overtake me. So I didn't really know, but I thought, I'm not, I won't overtake you now. I'll just sort of settle in. You see, Frank almost thinks about sending it there from three light years away. We love Frank on this channel. And then we go around this hairpin. It's the last true hairpin of the circuit. And you go down the back straight, there's a uh, airfield to our right there, an airport. And then the last corner, if you look straight, if you get your braking wrong here, you literally end up in the sea. And there was a plane landing. There was a plane landing there. So the last corner is actually faster than it appears. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you'll see my whole story of how I got here. And me starting from being the worst driver in this group by a long way to being really competitive, actually. And then you'll see my video of the first race that was just an absolute roller coaster. So this is the second race and it was the second race of three that I was doing in this day courtesy of VBOX Motorsport who like I said are just the most professional company. I think maybe the most professional individuals I've ever come across. I mean the fact that I'm sitting in this car right now, well not right now because I'm doing a voiceover, but then I was sitting in the car basically being one of you. I, I was a sim racer, that's all I did was play on the PlayStation. Literally. Literally I would play Gran Turismo. And um, you know, they gave me this opportunity to sit in a real race car and become a real racing driver. Shows how kind of uh, confident they are in their abilities to, to make them to good racing driver. And hopefully I've done a good job here. So we're chasing after Frank. You can see our first lap was a 1 minute 28.3. That was with the rolling start. We'll have a look. In qualifying, we did a 1 minute 25, a load 1 minute 25. So we'll see if we can go even faster than that in the race. You can see the top three drivers are battling. They're all in silver cars. 
and then we've got Frank in a dark car here and then JG the American motor journalist he's also there now I want to talk about safety motor racing safety look if you've seen the Gran Turismo movie which I'm in do I ever mention I'm in it I don't think I've mentioned it there's a line in it where the um, probably the best actor in that movie or the actor that gives the best performance who's the guy from Stranger Things I can't remember his name let me know in the comments he, he gets very angry at the main character says this is not a game you can't reset people will die if you crash and that to me does encompass the difference between real world motorsport and sim racing in sim racing in this corner here and I've driven this track in the sim so I drove this track in a set of courses before I came out I would just brake as late as possible and I'd probably try and brake a bit later and if I go into the barriers, I will literally just hit the reset button. It's the same for this corner here. It's a hairpin. It doesn't look that dangerous, does it? But, you know, I tried to break as late as possible. And if I end up in that gravel because I can't quite get it stopped, then no big deal. But when you're in real life, you have... It's not a voice in your head. It's more just a general feeling of self-preservation that is increasingly telling you to break. And you have to ignore it. And... I really had to learn to ignore that and these cars because I'm approaching some of these corners and braking late enough that if I didn't have the engine braking, I would actually go off the track. So it's not enough to have the brakes, you need the engine braking as well. Um, now this circuit, I've seen a lot of commentary now. I just want to say from my experience, my honest experience, I thought the way the circuit handled me and the group here was great. If you've seen my first video, I've been very transparent about that in terms of the different instructors, the different styles. Um, and they really got the most out of me. And they took me from someone who, you know, I'm sure places in England would be like, no, this isn't going to work. This is just, I'm not sure you're ready for this, mate. Um, and they managed to get me into a position where I'm just driving quite confidently now in the car, going down the gears, bit of engine braking, getting on the power here. Uh, not running off the circuit like we did in the first race, kicking up the gravel there, getting a few time marks in the car. So they have a different style out here, which is sort of, it respects your uh, intelligence and respects your desire to, to take things seriously and sensibly. And so it's a bit hands off. Um, and I like that. I like that responsibility. I, I had to get in the car. I had to do my own harness, make sure my helmet was done up. You know, that's more responsibility than you get in a lot of car arrive and drive karting championships in the UK. If you race at the highest level of arrive and drive in the UK, you know, they are checking things. Um, but here it's completely out to me. You see Frank, I don't know what he's doing. He's resting some kind of lizard there inside the car. So we're going to take this opportunity to really put the pressure on Frank. You can see the lap times have been coming down um, significantly. So I've sort of been getting into my groove and going to try and go up the inside. Now the car's... Some of them had a lot of mileage. I think my car had 120,000 miles on the clock. I don't know whether that's a lot for one of these cars or not. I suspect it's in many ways irrelevant because they're being constantly refreshed and, you know, brake pads and all the consumables are being replaced. So, uh, you know, but some people have said, oh, the cars look really old. Um, to me, that's, that's part of the fun of it. As we think about sending up Frank, I'm actually just going to stay out wide here. He turns in early and we'll try and get him on the exit. Let's see. As he does a weird thing there, pulls to the inside. Not sure why. Maybe trying to go defensive, anticipating I'd be there. But we were already out here. So we're going to get that position, go up to P5. Then we've got JG. And now I felt really good, by the way. I can see P3 there as well. And P3 was a million miles off in the first race. But in this race... I could feel at this stage, we're about halfway through the race, I, if I can get through to JG, I can actually start to approach those two there, because I, I feel like I've unlocked a serious amount of pace. Right now, I am, in my mind, just having so much fun. I am flying right now. I actually think on these laps, I was one of the fastest drivers uh, on the track. Maybe not faster than the leader, but I think I was even faster than the guys in two and three, which is... A big, big, big step up for me. See a 24.9 there, which would have, I think, put me in the top three in qualifying. So we are generally having a good time of it and catching up with JG. But we're about to get brutally reminded, as I've said, just how dangerous motorsport is. And I'm going to let you know my raw thoughts about it as someone who's, you know, obviously heavily involved in it. Um, so we're catching JG here interesting psychology by the way JG he's written an article about it his Mazda was geared a little bit differently 
So we got up the inside. I wasn't intending to go for a move, but I just thought I'll keep it on the inside. And I think JG had the awareness that I was there and didn't turn in. So it's kind of, I just sort of put myself in a position of opportunity and it sort of paid off because now we're side by side. You see, we've got different gear changes. I'm not past JG yet. You can see he's just going to be on the inside. So again, I'm going to try and stay uh, straight here and then cut back and get a really nice cut back. And I think this is where his car wasn't the strongest at the low speed because of his different gearbox. So we're up the inside now. We're, we're now in P4 and there are P3 and, and 2. They're a few seconds up the road and I am legitimately flying. I'm on that lap, if you saw in the delta in the bottom left, I think we were like half a second up on that lap as well. Which is insane. JG comes back at us. We're going to race him on the exit. But here's where everything kicks off. So have a look here. We've got everyone. I, I think I might have been ahead of JG. Maybe not. In the end, it's not going to matter because this race is abandoned. That is a red flag. And I pull over here. And I'm going to show you now some slow motion analysis. I'm going to give you my thoughts of what's going on and where it happened. You see the ambulance pulls out. Um, imagine yourself in my shoes, by the way. What would you do in this position it nothing had really sunk in for me yet so there's been some kind of crash here motorsport is dangerous the red flag is out uh the ambulance are going the other way around the track so we'll see what's happened so here's what happened now firstly have a look on the left hand side here all the way on the left can you see two cars about to go through that was jg in the, in the dark corner and then it's me so that's me there and the two cars going around the hairpin now that's frank and someone else now look at this car as they turn in and get on that curb and get launched onto two wheels, upside down, bounce up again. And there are another, I can't remember, maybe another two. But look how high that car is. Goodness me. As it goes over the tyre barrier and, the, uh, and the, the metal barrier behind it and into the airport. If you saw during this race, there were planes landing and going. Now, here is, by the way, this is all thanks to Kareem, the, my Italian friend who took this footage and has very gracefully let me use it. So big thanks to Kareen. I'll link to the channel in the description below. Now, what on earth has happened here? Now, I'm not going to name the driver involved because I understand they're a professional racing driver. And if we're honest here, either the car's at fault or the driver's at fault. And I don't want to cast aspersions because I don't know enough either way. That The driver was very nice to me. The track was very nice to me. I don't know what's happened here. But I just want to show you this footage because... This was the end of the racing for today. You can see, by the way, this is from the V-Box camera. So this V-Box camera is absolutely bulletproof. I mean, look what happened to the car. Goodness me. I mean, the car has been destroyed, but the V-Box camera recorded all of it, which is, you know, if that's not an endorsement for the camera, I don't know what is. I'm going to give you my, my raw thoughts here as I saw the car go off. Motorsport can and indeed will be dangerous. That doesn't happen in the simulator, does it? <laughs> We're all okay, everyone's okay, which is the most important thing. Wow. So there was kind of a surreal atmosphere at the end of that, because that was the racing done, the barrier was too damaged, and therefore we couldn't you know, finish that race and do the last race. Um, I wasn't really that concerned by that stage. I was just super happy that everyone was okay, because when I saw that footage, I was amazed that you could survive it. Um, so obviously the roll cage did it did its job, the barrier did its job, and I've got to be honest, really honest with you, as someone who you know I've done a lot of karting in my time, and I've crashed a lot in karting. I don't think that the crash in Gran Canaria I've just showed you that big one has really had any impact on me, and I'm not sure whether that's right. I, I wonder whether it should have an impact on me, but I don't feel like I've going to approach my driving any different having seen that and in a way that's a good thing I think and you know that's how it should be but in a way I worry that maybe I've got away with one here maybe that could have been me in that car maybe I would have made a mistake or, or whatever so let me know your thoughts on the crash let me know what you think happened this comment section is going to be a very interesting place to just get your thoughts not big big thanks to Kareem for sharing the footage and a massive thanks to Vbox who are part of the race audit company and uh, the Grand Canary Trap for hosting us. An absolutely awesome time. I've got more videos to come from this event. Don't worry about that. So keep an eye peeled. Make sure you're subscribed as well if you want to see me do more of this. Massively helps me out. And I'll see you in the next video.